the collect that we started the service with today, the collect for all saints, asks God to give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Ineffable joys. Who wouldn't want ineffable joys, joys so wondrous that words cannot describe them? So what are these ineffable joys, and how is it that following these saints who have gone on ahead of us can bring us to those joys? Well, we live in a world that promises us all kinds of pleasures, all kinds of joys, all kinds of happiness. Father Thomas Keating uh, taught that, uh, he, he talked about the allure of the world, the idols and, and temptations of the world using um, some psychological metaphors to sort of make sense of them. And, and he, t he talked about how they, they, they appeal to our desire. This is cutting in and out. Um, maybe we could use the podium mic for just the sermon time. Excellent, thank you so much. Thank you, Ben. Okay. Father Keating spoke of security affection and control. These ideas of security, affection, and control are what we desire, what we need, and what the world promises us, what idols promise to deliver to us. And, of course, the world doesn't always come through on those promises. You've all heard talk of security, promises of security. I think that for someone my age anyway, you, you, you see all of these advertisements for the, the best insurance or the best retirement instrument. If you just use Fidelity or Charles Schwab, then you don't have to worry about your future ever again because we will make you so much money with your retirement account that all will be well. Or, or maybe your worry is for, uh, for your children, and so you think, oh, I have got to get a car that is rated the very highest for safety, so I'm only going to buy a Volvo. That's their ad, right? Uh, that's what they want you to think. And affection is similar. Um, you know, the, 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 the world promises that if you are just pretty enough, if you wear the right clothes, buy and, and put on just right the correct makeup, um, drink the right beer, believe it or not. Apparently, if you drink the right beer, women fall in love with guys. I don't know how that works, but that's clearly the message from Anheuser-Busch. <laughs> or use this diet or this workout or this supplement and you will be both beautiful and loved. Control is a little bit harder to talk about, but I think we can get there. Um, if you have, this sort of crosses over between uh, security and control, but if you have insurance, then no matter what happens, you will be all right, right? Or if you can just be in charge of a larger group of people in your work, right? If you can just get that next raise, then you can be in control. Or perhaps what you need is, uh, is to be sure that uh, that, that people do things exactly the way you want them to do, and so you look for control. Those are the kinds of promises that the world makes to us, and they don't tend to work out. I mean, think about how wealth is supposed to give you security, and if you have enough wealth, well, then you can control your destiny. And, you know, what, what, what is the experience of, that you hear of people, maybe you've never had this experience, I don't think I have, but, well, yes, I have. If you get a little bit of money, how much, what do you want? More. More. And if you get a lot of money, well, what do you need then? More. More. And if you get a lot, lot of money, like Rockefeller, who was famously asked, how much is enough? More. He said, a little bit more. <laughs> 
that's the, the, the problem, that the, the promises of the world don't actually deliver. They're, they're false promises. And so Jesus offers us a different way of living. Jesus, in his Beatitudes, which Deacon Allen just read for us, tells us another way to orient ourselves towards life. Now, he starts off by saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed. What he's saying is, Oh, how happy you will be. That's what it means to be blessed. Oh, how happy you will be. What ineffable joys you will have. So, poor, materially poor, perhaps, or, or those with mental or emotional or physical uh, uh, limitations, those who are poor in one way or another, if they turn to God in love and faith, rather than turning to the promises of the world, why then theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happiness in the face of destitution, poverty, and affliction is the fruit of faith. So the Beatitudes are wisdom sayings, okay? They're meant to point us to a way of living, a way of orienting our hearts. Now, you may not be poor in spirit or poor materially or poor in other ways, but we can all access this orientation that Jesus is teaching. And it is the ancient practices, the ancient disciplines of Christianity that our ancestors, the very ones that we lit candles for today, have shown us how to do. For instance, for blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, we have the discipline of fasting. We have the discipline of vigils. The discipline of living a simple life. Simplicity of living. These are the ancient disciplines that point us in that direction that Jesus speaks of when he says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. They are the ones who actually have security. And their security is in God, in the love that flows from God. Well, what about those who mourn? How are they blessed? The second beatitude, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforting, comforted. Mourning is all about the loss of affection. When we lose someone that we have loved, we mourn. And the world tells us that what we need when we are mourning is affection. Affection can be found in fame and beauty or wealth. And yet, as I've already said, these things don't seem to ever arrive at that place of ineffable joy. We never seem to have enough of any of those things that the world promises us will lead us to a, back to affection. So Jesus doesn't say, blessed are the rich and famous. He says, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And we mourn when we have lost someone, and so we turn to God in love and trust. And again, there are disciplines, Christian disciplines, that can take us and orient us in that direction of this beatitude. The, the ideas of monogamy in a relationship or celibacy for those who are living under vows, keeping a covenant promise to another and to God orients us to God in the way that Jesus is speaking of here. And we know the affection of God, and we know the affection of those to whom we have promised ourselves. Or perhaps you could do work in service to community. Seek to give and to bless. Maybe you would do this by, uh, by helping to, to, to make the meal on Tuesday nights for, for those who are hungry. Or as St. Francis says, I love this. This is from the prayer attributed to St. Francis. He says, 
Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, to understand. I wrote it down wrong. But to be loved as to love. Because when we seek not to be loved, but to love, that orients our heart in this way that leads to true joy, true affection. And then the next one Jesus offers is, Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. And who are the meek but those who have given up their any desire or need for control? Think about meekness. The meek don't seek to control. They don't desire to be in charge. And again, our Christian disciplines can lead us to know this orientation, to live in this way. Blessed are those who engage in corporate works of mercy, healing the sick, feeding the hungry. Blessed are those who accept people just as they are, to show love and care for others, even when they annoy you, even when they don't look right or don't talk right, even when you don't like them. Look for that spark within them, that same spark that we recognized in people that we love and that is represented by these candles burning here. So security, affection, control, the world offers us one way of limited value, but Jesus points to another way, a way that leads to those ineffable joys. And I want to lead you, leave you today with, with a little practical exercise, a little prayer practice that, again, this comes from Father Thomas Keating. It's called the welcoming prayer, and some of you may have heard of it. Some of you have been in a class that I taught earlier on the welcoming prayer. The welcoming prayer is designed to free us from our uh, attachment to security, affection, and control, and to free us in those moments of activation when we become upset or emotional or charged in some way. And it's very, very simple. It has three steps, okay? In the moment when you begin to feel anger or anxiety or sadness and it feels like it's overwhelming you, try this. Feel and sink into what you are experiencing in this moment in your body. Feel and experience it. Feel it in your body. I know that when I am anxious, I feel it like a tightness in my chest. Maybe at this point in the sermon, you're bored. And so you might feel a heaviness of your eyes, okay? But these feelings manifest themselves in your body. And so feel that. Dwell into that. And the second step is also simple. Welcome. Welcome what you are experiencing this moment in your body as an opportunity to consent to the divine indwelling, to consent to the presence of the sacred within you. And the third step is to let go by saying, I let go of my desire for security, affection, control, and embrace this moment as it is. So let's just do that. Maybe you're not feeling a strong emotion right now, but you could go with maybe remembering an emotion that you've had or one that was a challenge for you. Or maybe you really are just bored. So feel and sink into what you are experiencing this moment in your body. Take a moment and do that. And now welcome what you are experiencing this moment in your body as an opportunity to consent to the divine indwelling. Welcome it. Whatever that sensation is, whatever you're feeling, whatever emotion, whatever your body is telling you. And now we let go by saying, I let go of my desire for security, affection, control, and embrace this moment as it is.
what I find when I practice this prayer, this welcoming prayer, is that I'm able to be present in the moment, even when I've become upset, or even when I've gotten scared, or even when I've gotten worried or anxious or angry. Just taking a moment, 10 seconds, to go through those three steps, to look at what I'm feeling, to acknowledge it, and then to welcome it, and then to let go by saying, I let go of my desire for security, affection, control, and embrace this moment just as it is. So try using the welcoming prayer whenever you feel anxiety or fear or pain or confusion or any of those emotions that might tend to overtake you and begin to run you. And start practicing the welcoming prayer with the little things in life, small everyday frustrations like sitting in traffic or the line at the grocery store is annoyingly long and slow. Practice with the small things prepares us to use prayers like this in the big things. And the welcoming prayer is just one simple Christian discipline that can lead us in to those ineffable joys because it changes our orientation. Our orientation from trusting in the false promises of the world to trusting in the love of God.